What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are putting a South Bend dual disc clutch in this 2014 Ram 3500, the G56 transmission. Uh, switching the clutch out on a tranny is gonna be pretty much the same procedure for any vehicle. So whether you have a Dodge like this or you have a completely different truck, if you follow this video, it should be relatively the same procedure. But uh, yeah, if you find the video useful, please like and subscribe. And uh, if you've got questions, ask in the comments or look me up on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel and shoot me a message. But anyways, guys, let's get at her. So as you can see, I backed this truck up onto some ramps. That way they're not in my way over here. Uh, gives me a little more room. This truck also has, I believe, like a four inch lift. So that helps a bit with underneath. And I chalked the, the rear wheels here. So we'll go under the truck and uh, see what we gotta do. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off this rear drive shaft. And I always mark it, like I just gave it a little mark there so I know where it goes back on. It doesn't really matter on a, a solid shaft like this, but it's just a habit I'm in that I always mark it so it goes back on the same way. And uh, once I get this drive shaft off, I'm going to pull the exhaust. Uh, I probably won't take it all the way off the truck, but I will for sure unbolt it and I'm gonna pull it back and it'll probably be hanging down over there. Just, I want, I want this downpipe completely out of here is my biggest thing because then it's gonna be a lot easier to get the the tranny bell housing bolts and everything so yeah first we're gonna do the drive shaft then we're gonna do the exhaust uh, let's also take this front drive shaft off to get the bolts out of the drive shaft at the transfer case, I'm just gonna use a wrench and then I just get a pry bar in here and if you twist it, you can butt it up against uh, control arms there or whatever, just so that it doesn't spin on you. All right, now we're gonna start taking this transfer case out. So I believe there's just one plug on the back here and then you're gonna have to kind of use the upholstery tool and un unclip it or un pop it out there. Get all the electrical off of here. This back piece can stay, but yeah, anything on there that's gonna get caught, take it off. And once that's off, you can come up here and there's uh, nuts all along the side there and you can take them all off. I usually leave one on a little bit uh, just until I'm ready to pull it, but there's probably six or so nuts all around there that you're gonna have to take off. And then uh, once we're ready, we'll uh, lift it and slide her out. Most times on a transfer case, there's also a breather line, so I had to just unclip this guy and cut a zip tie and pop her off, so. All right, now that the transfer case is out, we can remove the electrical off of the transmission, uh, the hydraulics there. We're gonna actually be putting new hydraulics on with this new uh, dual disc South Bend clutch. Uh, but yeah, you can just uh, take these nuts off, pop that guy off, and uh, then we will start taking the bell housing bolts out. And I would just leave two bell housing bolts in that are really easy to get at, because once we have uh, the other bell housing bolts up, we're going to uh, put a jack under here, and uh, there's three nuts right here, take that off, and we'll drop this uh, transmission cross member out of the way. So yeah, you can go ahead and get started at that. You can get all the electrical off of this cross member too. I'm probably actually just gonna unplug it and I can take this all off here and I'll just tie it up out of the way. Okay, as far as I can tell, I got all the bolts out except for one right here and one on the other side. They're really easy to get at. Uh, and I also, I couldn't figure out how to undo this one connector, so I just drilled a tiny little hole in this heat shield and zip tied it up out of the way. So now I'm going to take the three nuts off of uh, right here, off of this tranny cross member. And then once that is out of the way, I'm going to take these two big bolts out on each side and I'm going to drop this cross member out. 
It looks like, see how there's this kind of nut lock right there? On the same side, it has one too. I'm gonna have to back this off a bit just so I can rotate this down in this kind of gap so that I can actually drop this uh, cross member down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all that. I got the jack under it, and then we'll get this cross member out of the way. Make sure that you keep this orientated the same way that it went, so like you don't flip it around, just because that is at an angle like that. And if you flip it around, I don't know if it'll go in, but if you can get it in the wrong way, then your driveline angles are gonna be all out of whack. So just make sure that this goes back in the same way you took it out. One thing I didn't mention that I should is that uh, if you can see up there, I have a ratchet strap. I have a ratchet strap going around the transmission and it's strapped to the jack. Another good thing to do, but uh, yeah, we're going to, I'm gonna sweep this up a bit and then we're going to uh, go up top and pull the shifter out. All right, so I'm gonna quickly pull this air compressor, like airbag gauge off. And uh, I noticed this boot is already unclipped. It looks like there's just some clips like that that hold it in place. Uh, I haven't done one of these before, so I think we gotta pull this whole thing out though. Probably if we pop uh, these things out, there'll be bolts underneath it, but uh, I'm just gonna get this out of the way and I'll get these open and I'll let you know what I found. Okay, I popped this out and then I took uh, this cup holder out and there's a bolt down there and a bolt down there and then I just kind of pried it off and this thing just unclips from the front and uh, get her out of there. Then for this back piece, I just had a bolt uh, there and then this side looks like it was supposed to have a bolt, but I didn't have one in there. But uh, yeah, and then it just has those clips at the back. You can pop it out. I tried popping this uh, shift diagram out so I could take the shifter knob to get this boot off, but it was being a pain and I didn't want to wreck it. So I was able to actually turn this to the side and feed it through here and pull this right off the shifter. Then I pried this uh, air vent forward and popped it out and then lifted it up and out just like that. Get that guy out. And now it looks like there's one, two, uh, three, four. Probably just four bolts that holds this thing on. So I'm gonna take those bolts off and we should be able to lift this up and see the transmission. All right, there are actually six bolts or six little eight millimeter screws holding this guy on. So now it looks like we have some uh, inverted Torx bolts there, four of them, and then this should pop off and you'll be able to get your shifter right out of there. Uh, just uh, FYI, I'm gonna clean this up first and blow it out. Um, I recommend you do the same thing. You don't want a bunch of debris falling into your tranny. And then once I have this off, right away I'm gonna put a piece of cardboard in um, and just screw the bolts back in just so it has cardboard covering it. Use a rag or whatever you wanna do. We just it's gonna get stuff in it if you don't cover that because when you pull it out, you're gonna be bumping the truck and dirt's gonna fall in it. So just make sure you cover it up once you take it off. Okay, the shifter is out. I'm just gonna cover it up like that, try to keep it clean. And that's what it looks like from up top. So I like to pull it out in neutral, but when I go to install the transmission with the new clutch, I might slide one of those forward to put it in a gear just because then you can spin the output shaft of the tranny and that will sh spin the input shaft and it's a little bit easier to line up. But uh, yeah, for now we're good. I'm just gonna cover this up and then uh, we're pretty much ready to take her out. Just like that. Okay, I'm just taking the two bolts out of the bell housing that I left in there initially. Okay, now I'm gonna get a little pry bar. Kinda do that. You can see how it's kinda got a gap in there now. Um, this up here, this one bracket, make sure that it goes over top of the bell house flange when you're pulling it back. And yeah, we're just gonna slowly lower it and pull it out. Uh, it's sometimes good to have another guy here helping you 
and you try to kind of keep it in a nice angle with where the input shaft is going into the clutch uh, and hopefully it should just slide out pretty nicely sometimes they can be a pain in the ass but uh, yeah we'll see how this one comes out okay it's coming yeah there you go we're out yeah it should be go, go down a bit okay you're clear you can go right down now man okay this is a first for me so we got the tranny out look it is just full of seeds and if you go look at the clutch this is why the customer is having issues with it it is completely packed full of stuff it's like a family of mice was living in here wow there is stuff jam-packed everywhere in this clutch that is hilarious like look at this look at these springs see the springs are pushed out from all this stuff in there that's a first for me. That's hilarious. I don't even know how a mouse gets in there. I think it's crazy how a mouse can just take out a clutch. Like, that's ridiculous. Okay, well anyways, let's get this disgusting clutch out of here. So, there's eight bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all around the outside. And be careful, it's very heavy. Sometimes it's good to you know, get like another guy under here or something. I'm probably gonna try to do it myself. It's just, it is heavy, so watch out. Ah! Ah! Fuck you! What the fuck? What are you stuck on? What the? Fuck. This is stuck on there. I cannot figure out how to get it off. So, I don't know, I'm just gonna keep prying it. I might just get out of the way and just beat the thing till it falls on the ground. Okay, I've been hammering punches in here. I've been beating the whole thing. Um, I just cannot get this to come out. I've never had a clutch that didn't just fall out. So, I'm thinking I might be almost welded to the flywheel. So I'm gonna get an air hammer in here and just try to break it free and if not then I might have to get the cutting torch and cut this sucker out but this is it's kind of a big piss off okay she's not coming off so I'm gonna get a zip disc actually cut here 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 and here hopefully I can get this uh, intermediate plate off I believe that is and then see what's behind it I don't know how I'm gonna get it off I, I don't know why it's not coming off I hope I'm not just doing something stupid but I've replaced tons of clutches and never had to do anything like this before. They all just fall off. So anyways, I'm gonna try to cut this off. It's still stuck on there. Wow, I'm getting so pissed off right now. This is ridiculous. It just will not come off. Okay, I just blew out all the mouse nest shit in there and uh, now I'm gonna get the court torch and I'm going to cut it out. So I'm gonna try to cut out uh, enough to expose my flywheel bolts so I can just unbolt the flywheel with the clutch that seemed to weld itself to it and just take it all off together. I got a pail full of wet rags and a fire extinguisher just as a last resort. Should be fine, shouldn't need to use any of that but it's always better safe than sorry. But yeah, I'm gonna get the torch and go under there. All right, let's do this. Okay, we got that out. Now we're gonna cut these guys out a little bit and try to get these rings off and so we can get at those flywheel bolts. Okay, we got more rings off. Just one more ring to go. All right, there are the flywheel bolts. So I'm just gonna wait for this to cool off and I'm gonna zip those off and just pull everything. And there it is, finally, she's out. So I see in the instructions, it talks about a 2005 and a half to 12 Cummins. Uh, it says dual mass flywheel and it says the dual mass flywheel is bolted to a flex plate on the crank from the engine side 
Uh, basically, you have to unbolt it to remove uh, everything. So I thought that might have been the case with this, even though this truck's not, this truck's 2014, it's not 2012. So I did, just for fun, unbolt this. Just like that. There are my bolts for it. There's a spacer here. And then I flipped it over. And I was like, oh, maybe I just did this completely wrong, but I don't know. I uh, still cannot get this uh, plate and clutch apart. So I don't know, I'm pretty sure I had to cut it. I don't think removing those bolts from the back would have ch changed on this, on this clutch. But I just wanted to point that out to you guys. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a vacuum and I'm gonna vacuum out all this mouse crap in here. Uh, and then always have a look at your rear main seal. This one looks fine. If it doesn't look like it's leaking, I wouldn't touch it. But if it is leaking, this is a very good time to change it just because you're here already. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna clean this up and then we're gonna get the new flywheel in the South Bend kit and we're gonna mount it on there. Might as well vacuum this out while we're at it. Okay, and there's a spacer on the back of your crankshaft. And according to the instructions that come with South Bend, you do not use this. On the single disc and the street dual discs, uh, you just bolt the flywheel directly to the crank. And then if you're using the competition dual discs, uh, then it actually comes with its own spacer. So it says any metal spacer that is here must be removed. If you're just replacing the clutch with a factory clutch, I'm assuming you would reuse this unless it comes with a new one. Okay, got the new flywheel. This is all cleaned up. There's no space or nothing, so I'm just gonna lift this guy on. Uh, the kit comes with new bolts, so make sure you use them, and you torque them to 95 to 105 foot-pounds, somewhere in there. And I usually like to put a little bit of blue Loctite on them as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this flywheel up there. Okay, flywheel is up. You're probably gonna have to get a pry bar or something to just kinda jam in there, or get somebody on the front of the crank and hold in a bolt just so you can actually torque these to 100 foot-pounds. Uh, just because it's just gonna want to rotate the engine, but uh, yeah, the flywheel is all on Another thing I want to say is that if you're just putting a stock clutch back in here And it doesn't come with a flywheel you need to get your flywheel resurfaced or put a new flywheel in it You should always inspect your grooves here your starter grooves and uh, make sure it's all good But uh, yeah, just another tip I wanted to tell you you should also replace your pilot bearing when you get your flywheel resurfaced Okay, so we're gonna get ready to install this new clutch uh, so these discs matter which way they go. See right here, South Bend actually writes PP side. That means pressure plate, and that is your pressure plate. So that guy goes like that. Then you have your intermediate plate. And also, if your hands are greasy, you don't want to be touching this. You don't want this to get oily or greasy or anything like that. So make sure you got clean hands and uh, don't have anything slippery on it. And then here, you see this one it says FW side, which means flywheel. So this will go in your intermediate plate and then that goes right to your flywheel okay so again make sure the flywheel side is going to go onto the flywheel i'm going to grab this guy and this intermediate plate there because it has dowels right there so i'm going to slide those on um, and then i'm going to put the rest of it on make sure you have your shaft aligning tool that comes with the kit and then you're going to Put this in there and make sure it's all lined up and they all have to be perfectly in line or else you'll never get the transmission back in when you're installing it okay first plates in intermediate plates in now we'll put the rest on make sure you're using the new bolts that come with the kit i also like to put blue loctite on these as well and i believe they get torqued to 20 foot pounds but double check i'm not 100 percent sure I don't know if it matters, but they had all of these kind of spray painted red. So I lined them all up the way they were spray painted. So now I just have these bolts just kind of hand threaded in there. They're not snugged up though. I'm going to get this guy in and I'm going to uh, slide it all around so I can get this all the way into the pilot bearing in there. And as you can see, I'm going to have to kind of lift these uh, clutch plates up a bit and just get it all in nice before and then just leave it in there uh, before you tighten these down also what I would do is I would measure the distance in there 
uh, to the pilot bearing and then mark it on here and on this one it's almost to the end of these splines so that way you know that it actually is in all the way and it's seated in that pilot bearing okay that's what it looks like when it's in all the way right into the pilot bearing so now you can go ahead and i would kind of go uh, in a star pattern and tighten all these bolts and like i said i believe it was 20 foot pounds but i could be wrong so i would double check if i were you Okay, we're gonna get the new clutch fork and release bearing in. So first to get this one off, we're just gonna pop off this little retainer and then you should just be able to slide everything off. Once you have it off, it's a good idea to, to check here, check your splines, feel here for any like grooves and any, and you wanna check for play up and down. This one feels really good. There's a tiny little bit, but nothing much. So uh, there's that. So if you're doing a self-bend dual disc or whatever, the instructions in this one say there's actually a little washer behind this pivot ball. So you're gonna wanna take off this uh, pivot ball with a wrench there and remove the washer and then put it back in. So that washer, you don't need it if you're installing a self-bend dual disc. I'm not sure if it, what you do with a single disc, so read your instructions, but dual disc, get rid of it for clearance reasons it says. So this thing should come pre-greased. I usually put a little bit extra there just in there, but uh, yeah, this is ready to go on. So it's just gonna go on here in those two slots. And you're gonna hook it in just like the old one. Just make sure this is orientated the correct way. See, it says pivot ball right there. So uh, you can't really screw it up unless you're a big dummy. So I'm gonna throw it on there and we'll slide it on and put the retaining clip back on. Try to clean up any grease that might have squeezed out. Okay, clips in. So this is what happens when the hydraulics press it. Kind of neat. But yeah, this uh, should be ready to go back in the truck. So we still have to change the hydraulics because we put this uh, dual disc clutch in but that should be pretty easy to do once this clutch is in anyways. So we're gonna, or once the tranny's back in. So we're gonna put the tranny in. So start by pulling this guy out. Okay, I pulled it out and as you can see, it looks perfectly centered. The splines are lined up, so that's all good. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a buddy and we're gonna throw this transmission back in. The biggest thing is you don't wanna push it in. Like uh, you don't wanna force it in. It should just slide in nice. Uh, that means this is all lined up. What I do is I look at the, on the clutch and I try to kind of line the splines up the same way that they're on the clutch so it'll just slide right in. Uh, if you do run into trouble, you can go up onto the top where the shifter goes and you could slide one of those things forward or backwards to put it in a gear. And then you go to the back of the tranny and you can twist it and that will spin the input shaft and then you know it might kind of lunge forward into place. So yeah, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Grab a buddy, just try to keep it at a right nice angle going in and put the tranny back in. Are we going to clear it? Yeah, we can come up, but I think we got to go to the, the driver's side. It didn't, this clutch kit didn't give you a little ding? It did, I, I just took it out. Oh. No. Just keep pulling it forward as I go up. Just going to try putting it in gear here. Now you can give that a twist and then hopefully this tranny will go in. We're pretty close, but it's not quite sliding in all the way. Okay, we got her in. It wasn't too bad. It probably took us five, 10 minutes. It wasn't, I've definitely had worse. So I'm gonna get a couple bolts in, one on each side, snug it up. Uh, not all the way tight, but a little bit tight and get this cross member back in so we can get this jack out of the way. Okay, the transmission's back in. I tightened all these bolts up. Not sure on the torque spec, but uh, I just give it a good snug. You don't want to over tighten them because it is aluminum. Uh, I got these bolts, those three nuts, I guess, all tight there. And these uh, four cross member nuts are in. Now you can put your shifter all back together. Okay, I'm gonna put the transfer case back in now. Uh, all you're gonna do is just lift it up, put it in place with a buddy and just start a nut on it and then go in and tighten up your nuts. And then I'm gonna put the drive shafts back on. And I'd also put some new blue Loctite on here. Whenever I say Loctite, I'm talking about blue Loctite. I think I've only used red Loctite like maybe once or twice in my life. Okay, I got the drive shafts in. I also put the exhaust back in the truck. So 
What I would do too is I would check your uh, transfer case oil level because usually you leak a little bit uh, when you take it out. And then uh, that would be pretty much it. If you just installed a factory clutch, you would just have to bolt up your hydraulics right there and boom, you would be done. But this kit needs aftermarket hydraulics, so I've never changed them before. I'm just gonna figure out how to do that and we'll go over that as quick as possible because I'm sure we're getting pretty long in the video here. So this is the new hydraulics. This looks like it just bolts uh, in onto the firewall. These nuts are from inside the cab and then this attaches to your clutch pedal and then you got your hydraulic reservoir up here which you'll mount somewhere and uh, then yeah you just run the line and this is the same as the other one you just bolt her up so just gonna take the, uh, the old one out and we'll put this one in. One thing I didn't say in the video and I should have talked about it, I'm just going to quickly go over. This is the old hydraulics. This is where it goes to your, uh, into, your into your transmission, onto your clutch there. And uh, it has this little plastic thing that's going to be keeping it compressed. Just install it with that plastic thing. The first time you press the clutch, it's going to snap. And then this uh, plastic bushing stays on inside the tranny. So I just wanted to go over that quickly. Don't press the clutch pedal until you have this inside the truck. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to free up the hydraulic line by popping it off there and uh, wherever else it's clipped onto, cut any zip ties if you have to, but yeah, just get the line all loose. Next it says to remove the linkage from the clutch pedal. It says there's some kind of spring you got to watch out for, but on this one it looks like there's just a plastic thing that kind of spreads out when it pops through there and it'll just stick through there. So it looks like we got to use a flathead or something and bend those prongs in and slide it out. And then uh, that should release that. This is what it looks like. I used a nine millimeter socket here and I just pushed on it, which kind of compressed them and it popped through. Then I unplugged this electrical connector that attaches to that uh, hydraulics. Then there's two 15 millimeter nuts on my truck that you gotta take off. They're the ones that would go on this thing. Then I went on the outside and kind of gave it a little Pull to pop it off the firewall and then you can just push it through here. It's hitting on something so I'm gonna have to go into the engine bay and see why it's not just falling out there but just make sure that you get it out nice and that you're not wrecking any other wires in the process. Not gonna lie it's kind of a bitch. I got all this uh, I've kind of popped this over the frame so it's all open now. I can see it up there so it looks like I got more room to bring it down than if I were to try to fish this all the way up. So I'm gonna just try to get up there, up top and get this coming down a little bit and uh, just feed it all down here around these uh, fuel lines and out of the truck. Okay, never mind. I'm actually gonna pull it out the top just uh, very gently. You don't wanna snag any wires or wreck anything and then just cause yourself more issues. Okay, I got the old one out. See, I think the new one's gonna go in a little bit nicer because it doesn't have kinked bends in it like that. So yeah, I'm just gonna drop this one in and uh, I'm gonna bolt it up. Keep in mind, there's a jam nut right there on this linkage. So make sure you tighten that jam nut once you have it installed. I had this, I popped it off just to pull the old uh, uh, hydraulic kit out. Just, I don't know if I mentioned that before. But now we got to figure out how to mount this, so I'm probably just going to zip tie it up there or something like that. I don't know, I'll figure it out. I moved these two plugs to the back and then I just kind of put one zip tie there and there and now it's nice and sturdy. Okay, well that should be pretty much it. Make sure everything is zip tied nice out of the way. Uh, go over everything, make sure you didn't forget nothing. And uh, yeah, that should be it. Well, that's pretty much it. So South Bend recommends the break-in procedure is stop and go driving, which basically means they don't want you to do a lot of highway driving for 400 kilometers or miles, sorry. And uh, they don't want you to slip the clutch. So when you're starting and stopping, like when you're starting for sure, they want you to really engage that clutch. They don't want you to kind of be feathering it on there. So, but yeah, that's it for the video. I'm gonna go test drive this thing, make sure it's all good. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I put a lot of work into these videos for you guys. 
And if you got questions, ask in the comments or shoot me a message on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.